My name is Tom Carter. Um, I'm from Jamaica, Queens, New York. I am the founder and owner of Butter Customs, which is a company that paints sneakers, canvas, clothing items as well. Everything has been self-taught, so it's been a journey. I started painting because I like being creative. I love bright colors. So realistically, art is expensive. I make money by selling it. In the beginning stages, it takes a while to be in the green. Making money is all about promotion. It's all about um, getting to know like your audience and finding your niche. I created my own business page. I had one of my friends create a logo. And then from there I said, all right, let's look at the business aspect. I started like just doing research on like, accounting and how to keep my books up so that I know how much money's going in and out. No one's gonna take my business as serious if I don't take it serious. But one of the challenges to my work is time. I had to just create schedules to help with my time management. So my hobby is art, and I really like art because I grew up drawing. My hobby is art, and I like it because I can express myself and my creativity. I like that it's calming. The most challenging part about it for me is my self-doubt. The advice I give is to not stop. It might be disheartening when you see other artists who are better at the moment, but just because they're better at the moment doesn't mean later on they're going to be better than you. And once you lose confidence, that's when you start losing that drive to just do it. No matter what it looks like, just get it on the page. The more you practice, the better you'll get. If I look at some of my first customs, I look at some of my customs now, they look significantly different. The ones now look a lot more professional, and that's just due to hard work. I saw it, I wanted to do it, and I kept going no matter what. So just, just keep cushioning, and keep going. My name is Rashid Hughes and I'm originally from Richmond, Virginia. Heart Refuge is a mindfulness community made of people of color. Yoga not only has physical benefits, but it also has mental health and emotional health components to the practice as well. Meditation was attractive to me because it was a way for me to get to know myself and to help me to have some tools and skills to self-regulate. It is possible to actually make a living off of being a mindfulness teacher and a yoga teacher. You usually have to have some type of certification that can get you trained. You can pretty much start working in studios and also you can create your own spaces like I, like I do mostly. For youth who are interested in learning how to pursue a yoga instructor path, I would encourage you to not feel like you have to assimilate to the mainstream yoga presentation. There are many creative ways for you to develop yourself as a yoga teacher. You can host yoga classes at gyms or rec centers. You can do yoga classes outside in your own neighborhood on basketball courts. What I really have to encourage myself to do is to kind of honor where my body is and to really focus on um, learning how to get to know my body, my mind, rather than really comparing myself to how another person's success is or how another person's body might look. Because it's really not about flexibility or what you can do with your body. It's more so about learning how to be kind to your body and your mind. What I like best about yoga is stressing. Stressing is one of the best things. The most challenging is one of the poses. To hold the stance is really hard. I really love yoga, how it's really good for me, like really good exercise for my muscles and my abdominals. I would say my favorite part about practicing mindfulness and being a yoga instructor is that I'm constantly engaging with people who are committed to being more kind and compassionate towards themselves and towards other people.
But I am Conscious the MC, hip hop artist, youth advocate, educator, and speaker from Washington, D.C. I was actually working in the Department of Commerce for about six or seven years. I left in 2012 to uh, follow this pursuit of happiness in hip hop and, and using the gift and talent which I have to inspire people. I was introduced to, to hip hop in the classroom by a colleague of mine seven years later and still uh, doing music and hip hop in the schools and, and just showing youth alternative avenues in which they can exercise their creative right. I never knew that there was such a need for hip hop in the education realm, especially with uh, assisting educators on how to get their students to be more responsive in classrooms. And art is like the most direct way to do it. So initially, that was my first assignment, was literally going into a classroom. I was with a social studies teacher. The kids just weren't engaged. And so I sat down with them over his lesson plan and we created a rap. So right now, uh, making my money primarily is using my gift and talent and attaching it to a cause of an organization and coming up with a strategic way in which you can engage others. I like music because, you know, I like the sounds. You know, I like the lyrics. My plans in the future is to work with artists that, that I like to listen to. Any advice that I would give to anybody, regardless of your art, don't take no for an answer. You really have to develop a skin that is so thick where if somebody says, no, I don't like it, you can just take it on the chin and keep it going. A lot of the times artists don't reach that full potential for themselves because they allow negative critiques and they harbor them and hold them so close that it actually sucks the drive out of them. You don't chase your dream, like you capture it and you tackle it and, and you utilize it and, and you make it work for you.